welcome back to my channel. <laughs> my name is Eliza and in today's video I'm going to talk about the Bay Area yarn crawl and other things. Actually, the other things being my whips and the pattern that I'm working on releasing and learnings around writing patterns. <laughs> Let's just start with the Bay Area Yarn Crawl covering 21 stores, I think. And there are these like designated stores. This is my bingo card that I printed out from the internet. I thought you had to print it out and then I went to the first yarn store and they had these really nice like thick cardstock bingo cards. But I just decided to stick with the one that I printed out. I'm really not doing very well this um, yarn crawl. I did much better last summer when me and my friend went and did the like Sonoma County yarn hop um, but we did do the whole thing in one day and it was like eight stores I think. Maybe it was like eight but this one's much harder. This is 21 stores and they're like all over the Bay Area. Like if you don't have a car it's challenging. There must be at least like a 70 mile like range between like the furthest one and like the most south and the most north store and then there are some that are like on the coast and some in the city <laughs> so i have really not been doing very well i i got a really random one which is a store i've never been to in marin called knit house on maine that store was really nice uh, it was in this cute little neighborhood with like shops and restaurants um Maybe it was by the ocean? I don't know why. I think maybe it was by the ocean, but I don't remember seeing the ocean. When I was there, um, the only thing I bought was a magazine. I bought a copy of this magazine. For some reason, in my, in my head, I thought that this magazine was gonna be like $17. <laughs> Literally, I was like, these cost $17. Like, where did I get that number from? I have no idea. Maybe that's like an average, maybe that, in my head, that's what like a fancy magazine should cost based on something I saw who knows when but this is like 30 bucks i literally bought it because i've always wanted a copy of this magazine and i've never gotten one because they never had like the most current publication in the stores when i saw it like they had back issues and so i saw that they had it and there wasn't really anything else in the store that i wanted and so i got it but i was definitely like oh 30 dollars oh for a magazine okay <laughs> it's a really nice magazine but just like I don't know that I would buy, I don't know that I would spend $30 on a magazine. I'm kind of a frugal queen sometimes <laughs> with with some things. <laughs> would I spend $30 on a skein of yarn? Yes. But a magazine? Uh, I, I mean, yes, I guess I did. Also, I didn't even like look at the magazine before I bought it. So then I looked at it and I was like, maybe I should have like looked at it and like decided if there are things in here that I actually want to knit. And there are, there are a couple. I probably wouldn't knit all of these things, but the sweater on the cover actually, this has this really pretty like lace pattern and I might make that if I were to make one of the things. Super cute. And then there's a cardigan in here. It looks, it said it's um, it said it's like a shaker, like an uneven shaker stitch. But I think if I were to knit something like this, I would probably just knit the petite knit like brioche sweater because I've been wanting to knit that anyway. And they, they're they kind of similar, you know, just looking real quick, they're kind of similar. This sweater is pretty, it has a lot of textured stitches, which are always fun to do. I'm knitting the Esther cardigan right now and that has like a bunch of textured stitches and it's so fun to knit stuff like that, in my opinion. <laughs> but. I've said this before on my channel that I really like um, patterns that like keep my mind occupied. So I will knit things that are just like stockinette, of course, because I love the way stockinette looks. But I often like put those projects down and like don't pick them up again. Sometimes ever. <laughs> There's this like funky cable pattern in here. It looks really cool in the photos, but I don't think I would like wearing something like that um, because I, I have, I feel like I've made stuff like this that's very airy and open before and like it, I don't know, something about like the super lightweight sweaters like that, I just don't really like. 
Maybe because I'm still cold, but I have a sweater on and I get really cold. <laughs> okay, yeah, but this is all I bought from Knit House on Main. That shop was really nice. I wanted to spend more time there. I wanted to buy things, but I have, uh, I'm still at the point in my knitting journey where I have bought a lot of yarn. And so I'm super picky now and I have not been buying yarn unless I need it <laughs> for a project. Also, I don't have my studio anymore, which is also why I haven't been uploading as frequently. I just like, my whole life is a little disorganized. I don't have a studio. A bunch of my craft stuff is like in a storage space. So yeah, those are my excuses. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, not buying yarn. So I don't actually remember if I saw any yarn at Knit House on Main that I would have purchased. Let me just go to their website real quick. I remember seeing one one yarn that did intrigue me and I and I remember thinking like, oh I would totally buy this yarn and like maybe I'll come back and get it. But like I don't live near Marin, so I'm never gonna go back and get it. I don't know why I had that thought. Okay, but I found it on their website. The yarn, I think the brand is, uh, I think it's in French. Maybe it's Biches and Bushes. <laughs> I don't know, I'll link it down below, but it was the like cotton and alpaca yarn. It was super soft and squishy and what's the content? It's 66% cotton and 34% super fine alpaca. And it says it's G-O-T-S cotton. What does that mean? Oh, it's like the good, uh, oh no, it's Global Organic Textile Standard. Oh, so it's like the organic standard. Okay, cool. And they were only $8, so that was intriguing to me because it's cotton alpaca, and it was only $8, but it's only 98 yards, so you would need like a buttload, <laughs> depending on what you're making. If you're making a sweater, you'd probably need like 10. I don't know, but I, I thought that that yarn was intriguing out of all the yarns that I saw in their store. Okay, and then today I went to two other yarn stores. I have literally only gone to three yarn stores out of 21 and it ends in two days. <laughs> but I'll tell you my plan in a moment. So I went to Avenue Yarns today and they did have a yarn that I really like was standing in front of for a long time considering purchasing. And it was the Istiger Erin Tweed yarn. They had it knit up in this pattern. Um, I'll just put a picture of it, but it was like a v-neck with a cable. And the pattern did look a little funky. Like, I don't know if it was just the sample. Maybe they didn't have enough yarn for the sample because the sleeves looked like weirdly, like weirdly narrow. <laughs> like, like I have thin wrists and I feel like even on me, like that sleeve just looked wonky. But the sweater itself was really cute and it was knit with the Issigar Erin Tweed in confetti. And then it was like held with another color of silk mohair. I think it was like a light pink and it was so pretty. I really wanted to buy that yarn. Um, I'm like obsessed with tweed yarn right now and it was $16 for a skein and there were 175 yards and like the sweater sample only took five yards No, no, <laughs> it only took five skeins So I was super tempted to get the yarn, but I didn't really want to knit that sweater because It just felt like an extra an extra project and I I really want to stick to my queue <laughs> my Ravelry queue I have added things to my Ravelry queue in the past couple weeks. I've also like decided that I don't want to knit some things on my Ravelry queue. Maybe we'll get into that in a moment. Okay, but that was the only thing I saw at Avenue Yarns that I wanted to buy. And I'm still thinking about it. That's like, I might go back, or I might order it on, I don't know. I might get that yarn. And I was thinking, actually, I was thinking that yarn could be really pretty in the Nomad Jacket by Wool and Beyond. Let me see, it calls for worsted weight yarn and I think that other yarn is like a DK. Oh, it's Erin, it's literally in the name, it's called Erin Tweed. <laughs> so I could potentially use that and like hold it with a silk mohair to potentially get the worsted weight. But I think that the tweed would look really cute in the Nomad jacket pattern. And then I really wanted the confetti color, which is like kind of a gray blue base with like a rainbow um, neps and tweed. I have a sweater like that. I have this like vintage Gap sweater that's basically a gray sweater with rainbow neps and it would look pretty similar. But it would look different if I made it into a jacket. Uh, at this point I'm just <laughs> rambling, but yeah, I wanted to buy that and I'm still, yeah, I might go buy it. Okay, anyway, then I went to 
Oh, I went to four stores. I was confused though because when I went to Black Squirrel, they stamped all the Instagram spaces too. Um, so that's the little Black Squirrel stamp. I just went to Black Squirrel after I went to Avenue Yarns. The most exciting thing I saw at the Black Squirrel was the Fiber Shed Yarns and I don't feel confident enough in my knowledge of the Fiber Shed Farm to just tell you why it's so cool to me. So I'm gonna link it down below, just the website with all the information. When I was in college, the college that I went to, it was an art school, but it had a really strong emphasis on sustainability and it really like challenged students to think about what they are putting into the world, all that good stuff. <laughs> and we talked about Fiber Shed a lot, so seeing that they had these yarns which are like 100% wool and made from sheep up in northern california often undyed or like they're i mean yeah they're undyed but like some are like the color of the sheep you know cool stuff like that so i was just really excited to see that and i really thought about buying that yarn but i didn't have a project in mind so i did not but i'm still thinking about it so I'll link that down below and you can read up on it. It's really interesting. They have like a whole circular economy um, like map on their website, which is really cool. I was really interested in like a circular system like that. Just, just like in general, I thought it was so cool. Like if it could ever happen. And there's a really interesting book called Cradle to Cradle, which is about a circular economy like that. So check it out. <laughs> Actually, the first store I went to before Knit House on Main was a verb for keeping warm. I went there, it was like the first or second day of the yarn crawl, and it was so crowded. It was so crowded. I didn't want to buy anything, but I just like looked around because I didn't want to go right up and be like, can I get a stamp? Even though that's like part of the yarn crawl, but I just felt like I should at least look at the product. <laughs> And they did have really beautiful stuff, as always, over for Keeping Warm is like the most beautiful yarn store. Yeah, that's about where I'm at with my bingo card. I'm definitely not going to get a bingo. I might be going a little bit north in California this weekend. So if I do that, I could potentially go to Dharma Trading Co. <laughs> and I could potentially go to Atelier Yarns. And yeah, maybe I'll go to Piedmont Yarn, but... Uh, I'm definitely if even if I go to those three stores I'm not gonna get a bingo because they're just like all over the place I'm just doing it for fun at this point I mean it's fun either way I when I did the Sonoma County yarn hop I didn't win anything and it was still a lot of fun it's just fun to like go and interact with the community that's it for the yarn crawl and now I'm going to talk to you about my projects back in like October November I started knitting this shawl it was just like because I wanted a, to make a shawl that looked like this a double knit shawl <laughs> it's a double knit shawl I made it with wool in the gang feeling good yarn on US 9 needles and I think I used like three balls of each color <laughs> and I just finished it like a month ago and I had written the pattern down of course in like the most disorganized way and I've been trying to finish writing the pattern but I I'm just like not confident that I wrote it down correctly so I have been rewriting or I've been like editing my previous notes on the pattern but I just like had to knit a sample basically before I could like confidently release this pattern so I'm making a tiny one <laughs> this is my tiny wonky sample just so I can get the increases correct. I have it written like when you're gonna change colors, when you're gonna add a square, all that stuff. And yeah, this looks super wonky because I have not been following the instructions. I've just been skipping ahead to the increases. <laughs> but I'm almost to the middle of this and then I'm gonna decrease. I'm going to finish writing down all my notes for the pattern today and then I'm hoping to release it as soon as possible. I really have trouble writing patterns. It is so much harder than it seems but also I just like really don't want to release a bad pattern or a pattern that's wrong and I still fear that some of my patterns that I have released are like not good <laughs> like they're not written well that's what I'm gonna do after I finish this video in addition to that my like fun personal project is just the Esther cardigan my petite knit and I have almost finished the shoulders 
I decided to use this chunky yarn because it's all that I had. Here's the back. I, yeah, I decided to use the Ella Ray Eco Tweed Chunky Yarn that I had used for, um, I used it for the Mimi sweater, but I didn't end up liking how the Mimi sweater fit. The sleeves are like super, um, no, no, the armpit was like super high and tight and I didn't like it. And I also didn't like that my stitches looked better on the inside than the outside. <laughs> so I didn't really want to knit it again. It's my own fault for for just going with the flow and not making those changes while I was knitting the sweater. Sometimes I just like knitting <laughs> and I don't care that I'm not gonna like the end result. But I hope, hopefully I'll change that, that pattern of mine. I'm knitting this cardigan now and I'm having a lot of fun. I can't wait to start knitting this again today, but I, I have to write my pattern. It's really fun. It said it was a difficulty of five out of five. Um, I don't know why. Maybe because it's like moss stitch, stockinette stitch, I don't know why, <laughs> but maybe I'll know by the end of the pattern. I did find that like when I did my increases for the shoulders here, they have you increase on like every single row and mine got like kind of bubbly, but I'm hoping that once I put it on, my like shoulders will kind of fill out the, the bubbliness. <laughs> also hoping that it'll fix itself when I block it. <laughs> oh yeah, and then I actually have one more whip. My final whip, which I had to stop, working on because I ran out of yarn is this oh my gosh it's this this is the rug sweater by Junko Okamoto it's her free pattern I haven't tried it on yet it does look a little like um like I don't know the shoulders go really low but there's a bunch of color work that you do before you even break off the armholes so maybe I'll try it on before I buy the yarn that I'm missing but I'm using the yarn that I was originally gonna use for her taro sweater I started knitting the taro sweater and I even like made adjustments to the pattern so I could knit it in the round because it's knit flat but I was like worried that I didn't have enough contrast because I was doing this yarn with like a blue yarn and I just didn't I didn't like it <laughs> but I had a little bit of this Hedgehog Vibers Tweety yarn left over from an Oslo hat that I made my mom. So that's what this is. And it's on the bottom too. And then this green yarn is, it's Universal Deluxe Worsted. I ran out of the, I'm like getting tired. After like rambling for 20 minutes, I'm getting kind of tired. <laughs> I ran out of this Hedgehog Fibers Tweety yarn and I have to put it on the sleeves too. And I really like this color combination. So I kind of want to buy more, but maybe I'll try it on first and make sure that I like the way it's fitting before I go and buy a whole nother skein just to use like 50 yards of it for the <laughs> armholes. That one's pretty fun to knit. I actually was like really enjoying knitting the color work on this because it's pretty simple and it was just like so satisfying to see it knit up. But I also really love the green on the brown. I love how much it pops. Hopefully that this weekend I'll be able to go to a couple more yarn stores. I don't know that I will buy anything except for this Hedgehog Fiber Sweetie yarn. When I was at Black Squirrel, another thing that they have that I thought about buying, but I, they didn't have the like right color for me in the moment, is the Make It Tweed yarn, which is like a yarn that you hold with another yarn to like make it tweed because I'm super into tweed. <laughs> I just want everything to be tweed right now. Let me know if you're doing the Bay Area Yarn Crawl too, or if, you're, if your town, city, or whatever also does silly activities like yarn crawls. I'm gonna work on my pattern and I'm gonna work on my Esther sweater, Esther cardigan. Okay, bye!